I think that this is how standard Mac desktop looks like. But you can transform it into this and have all the widgets around you. Or maybe something like this and have them nicely on the side on this cool looking animated background. Whatever you see on my desktop was done with three applications. And in this video, I will show you six different apps how to enhance the experience with your Mac desktop. So let's start. I think you will agree with me that the first thing you always want to set it up is your desktop background. So let's do that. You have a nice collection of aerials already included in macOS Sonoma, but I like to switch the backgrounds quite often. So only this one, this Redwood Forest, has around half a gigabyte. So if I have to download many of them, it will eat up a lot of my storage. I'm happy to exchange that for this cozy animated background, which has around 30 megabytes. You can find a huge collection of live wallpapers, anime, games, pets, cartoons, in the app called iWallpaper. It's a great way to make your MacBook more aesthetic and unique looking. It's a free app which you can download from the App Store, but it has a paid version if you want to remove the watermark here in the corner. But I can just cover it up with widgets, so it doesn't bother me at all. If you are not into these animations and rather have still images, then there is one more great app you can download on the App Store. It's called Unsplash. Once you open it, you will have access to a great collection of high resolution images straight from your menu bar. And you can be switching your background very often. Advantage of this app is that it's entirely for free. So these images will not have any watermark at all. I think we have the wallpaper sorted, but there is still some potential left on the desktop. How about adding a clock to it? Yeah, it's really hard to be always looking up here in that corner to see what's the time, right? Make a lot more sense to add to the desktop flip clock. Well, that's how the app is called. Desktop flip clock. It basically just showed time, but in this menu you can customize it a little bit. I like to make it more transparent to blend in the background. But if you want to move it, you first have to switch into the floating mode. Put it on the position where you want it and then switch back to full screen window mode. Otherwise, it will be overlapping with all of your windows. Anyway, I will quit it because I have alternative to that. And that's called Flip Clock Digital Widget. It's actually not an app, it's a widget. So you can add it through the widget setups. I can find it right here. Again, you have a paid version with different styles, but I'm really happy with the basic look of this free version. So that's good enough for me. By the way, I will link all of these applications in the description of this video. So you will find everything there. Now, when you download so many apps, they are usually adding icons in the menu bar, making it quite stretched out. So it makes sense to hide applications which you are not really using. For that purpose, I am using another app called Hidden Bar. It's really easy to set it up. You just need to put applications on the left side of this line which you see on top. So now on, everything on the right side will remain visible and the rest which is on the left side of this line will be hidden behind this arrow. Let's finish this video with my set of widgets on the desktop. There are a few standard ones, but set in a very unique way and also a set of other widgets from a very useful app which is fully for free. But first let's get the standard widgets out of the way. First, I'm using shortcut widgets. It gives you access to these quick commands straight through the desktop. All you need to do is to open the shortcuts app, create a folder there where you will put only shortcuts you want to display in the widget, and then you set that folder into the widget. And now you can get things done straight from the desktop. The other one here is currency exchange. Well, there is no currency exchange widget by default, right? Yeah, this is just a stock app. But I don't use it to check stocks, I use it to check currencies. Check this out. If you open it up and type two different currencies with a slash in between them, that will show you current exchange rate. I find it much more useful than just checking stocks for some companies. 
and you can also do this with Bitcoin if you are into cryptocurrencies. But now let me tell you more about the other widgets you see on the desktop. They are all from the app called Lockera Widgets. You can get this app straight from App Store and it's fully free without any license included in it. The first one on top is called On This Day and it will tell you what happened on this day on some other year in the history. I like this interactive widget to educate myself. Next two are very useful widgets. First one will tell you about your free space on your Mac. It's really important information and it's great to have it in front of your eyes all the time. This one right next to it is something similar to reminders. But the advantage of this widget is that you can put more different to-do lists into one single widget. That makes it a lot more useful than the default one. This widget all the way down here displays upcoming birthdays. Well, if you have it set in your calendar app. But you can actually replace it with a standard calendar, which will be showing you that as well, and also your upcoming events. There is one more interesting widget connected to dates. In here you can add your important dates as well, and see how many days have passed since your wedding, your graduation, your date when you subscribe to One Byte Academy, or any other date. It can also be the opposite and show you how many days left till your next event, your next appointment, or maybe end of the vacation, and so on. Did you notice how effortlessly I squeezed the recommender by subscribing to the channel? Let's ask the magic ball if you are going to subscribe after watching this video. I thought so. But anyway, I'll keep on making these tutorials and I hope that I'll see you on the next video as well. Thanks for watching.